And so this is a very powerful and very practical technique that every biogeometry student learns to do for oneself or to help others. Now another aspect of this that is extremely important and one of the reasons why this knowledge is being given out today after it's been held secret for so many thousands of years is that we also teach people how to transmute electronic devices and in fact all electromagnetic energies from detrimental energy into beneficial. And so during level two we will show you how to directly detect the detrimental energy from electromagnetic sources of all types, doesn't matter what type of electromagnetic detrimental electropollution it is, we can detect it and we can transmute it. So that the problems people are having today with being bombarded by the toxic energies of our modern technology, we can now transmute that to a beneficial energy quality. Very important part of the biogeometry work. In fact, Dr. Kareem has told me that one of the reasons that he is so active today in getting the work out to the public is that it's absolutely vital we begin to transmute all the electromagnetic pollution that we're surrounded by today into beneficial energies. There's another part of level two where we show you how to work directly with geometric forms, which sometimes can have both beneficial and detrimental energy, and to fine tune the shape of the form so it has only the beneficial energy. And I'll just briefly touch on this. If you go to Egypt, and you look at the three pyramids at Giza Plateau, you might not notice that all three of the pyramids have a half a degree indentation down the center of the four faces. Now, if you see it from a plane, often it's much clearer that there is that indentation down the center of the faces. This indentation is known to Egyptologists, but they have no idea why it exists. Now it was extremely hard to build the pyramids in the first place. How much harder would it be to create this indentation line down the center of the four faces? And why do it? Well, the reason that we sow students in level two is that if you detect the energy of an uncorrected pyramid, out of its base you get both beneficial and detrimental aspects of this spiritual carrier wave. But if you make this transmutation to it, this modification, which can also be done very simply, with particular lines put on places on the pyramid that you not only get rid of the detrimental energy component as detected with the equipment that we teach the student to use, but you can also make it so that in addition to the detrimental component being gone, you now get all BG3 coming out of the base of the pyramid. And this was actually done in ancient Egypt and now we can teach you how to do it as well. Now I mentioned before that the French had found that the form of the pyramid emanated the spiritual carrier wave. And so for that reason, it's used as a place of initiation in cultures around the world. But the same thing is true of the dome, that the dome form also creates a spiritual carrier wave. And there's also methods by which the dome, which is used in the last 2,000 years primarily instead of the pyramid for the exact same purpose of creating the spiritual carrier wave that connects spirit and matter. There are particular ways that we can work with it to get rid of the detrimental energy component and to create a BG3 emanation from the particular shape. And again, that's material that we go into at level two. Another aspect of this work, when we try to describe it to the public, uh, one of the ways that we often uh, describe it metaphorically is it's something like an Egyptian version of feng shui. So, although on one hand the Egyptian biogeometry methods are very different from the particular types of cures and approaches used in Chinese feng shui, nonetheless it's similar in the sense that we can use Egyptian biogeometry to analyze the energy in any space and to transmute the energy in the space to be highly beneficial. In fact, we have had many practitioners of feng shui from many different schools of feng shui do the biogeometry training. And they tell us it has revolutionized the way they do their work. Now for the first time, they tell us, they are able to directly detect the energy in the space and know when their energy transmutation work has been effective. They say it's completely revolutionized the way they do their work. And biogeometry is a kind of a universal donor. It can be added to any body of work including feng shui. So we can energy balance any location and we can create a spiritual power spot at any location. 
Now the methods for this are many and varied, so I'll just touch briefly on a couple of them that we deal with in level two. One is something called color placement, which can also be object placement. To make it very brief, what we find is that we can take any object or we can take any color and within the enclosed confines of any location, let's say a particular room for example, in that particular room I can go along the walls of the room and by testing the energy I will find one place in that room where I can put a specific object or a specific color and it will create an emanation of the BG3 energies powerfully throughout the entire space. Now again, this is not a set feng shui type of placement idea. In other words, it's not like this object goes in the northeast corner. In biogeometry, we don't have that type of concept. We do everything according to direct testing of the energy. It's not abstract, it's direct testing of the energy so that we find exactly where that object or that color in that particular space gives us empirically exactly the beneficial energy that we need. So this is a very important and fundamental aspect of the Egyptian energy balancing of locations. Now when I say we use color, this can be done very subtly. It's all a matter of precision. So that, for example, instead of putting up like a big swath of color in one particular location to create a BG3 emanation, I can even take a tiny dot of color, like I would use to code uh, file folders, little sticky dots of color like I would get at a office supply store and I can stick it up at a location, and if the location is correct, from it being at that location in the room, it will create a strong emanation of the BG3 through the entire space. I could even put it on top of the lintel, so you can't even see it when it's placed. When properly done, biogeometry modifications can be completely invisible, but the energetic effect is profound. Another aspect of this is that uh, there's also an Egyptian method by which any object in its own location can simply be rotated on its own central axis and an orientation can be found through which that particular material will give an emanation of the BG3 into the space. So as one example here, these tiles in an Egyptian apartment are being tested and put at the correct alignment, orientation on the floor, so that now all these tiles will give BG3 from the floor up. So again, once we understand these principles, we can apply them many different ways. There's also ways that we can use specific angles to create strong emanations of beneficial energy. Just like we have a particular angle on this form here that is then often put uh, to help benefit plants or can even also be used in the house. We give many different manifestations of this type in the training. As we get into the deeper aspects of it, as I mentioned before, the work we do in biogeometry can be invisible, but the energetic effects can be profound. As one example, there was a biogeometry energy balancing done by a biogeometry practitioner named Michael Keith in an expensive Manhattan apartment. And it was covered by one of the leading interior design magazines in the United States called Veranda. And in this article called Biogeometry Calm, they showed pictures and for the untrained eye, you would never pick out the biogeometry corrections to the space. And the person that wrote the article said that, I don't really understand anything they did in this space, but I do know that the second that you walked into the apartment, you could feel it. In fact, I brought a friend with me who was a very, very loud and somewhat abrasive person. And as soon as he walked into the apartment, he began to whisper, which was unprecedented for him. So the energy is extremely palpable when it has been energy balanced. Another form that we teach people to use is related to the concept of the gate in ancient Egypt. This is a hieroglyphic set from ancient Egypt that literally means the gate, like a spiritual gateway. And in the level two training, we go into more detail about the different pieces of it that go into a spiritual gateway. And we have the students at their tables actually create the proper gateway form and show them how to align it to create a strong emanation of the BG3.